Hey, this is Jaybugs and welcome to another episode of the Minecraft Bedrock Survival Guide. Today we're going to be talking about smelting and furnaces. To start smelting your items, all you need is 8 cobblestone, which you can use to get a furnace. We can then pop this down and put some items and a piece of coal in there and it will start cooking up the items. As a really basic intro, that's all you need to know. <laughs> As you can imagine though, there's a lot more interesting info as you start to look at this in more depth. Firstly, it's good to know that there are ways to upgrade your furnace. If we take four logs and place them around the outside of the furnace, this will allow you to craft a smoker. Smokers are used for cooking up food. Alternatively, with three pieces of smooth stone and five pieces of iron, you can craft a blast furnace which can be used to cook ores. It's worth knowing that even if you have both a smoker and a blast furnace, you won't be able to cook up every item in the game, so you will still need a furnace as well. Next, we're going to pop some items into each of these. We'll pop 8 items and then add a piece of coal to start them smelting. Here you can see the benefit of the smoker and the blast furnace. The items you cook in these will cook twice as quickly, so by the time they finish cooking, we can see that we've still got half the items left in the regular furnace. It's worth saying that although they cook twice as quickly, you can still only smelt the same number of items with any fuel source in the game. Next, we're going to chat through the different fuel sources. Fuel is basically what gives your furnace power, and each fuel will last for a different amount of time. We're going to start by grabbing some coal, which can be one of the easiest fuels to find, and which you're going to get your hands on pretty early in the game. Each piece of coal will allow you to smelt 8 items. If instead you choose to craft a coal block, you'll be able to cook 80 items which will give you a little bit of an efficiency gain. Next we'll look at kelp. Kelp is a little bit more work to use, but you can build farms which makes it pretty easy to semi-automate. For me, the easiest way to find kelp is to go to an ocean, dive down and break the kelp near the bottom of its stem. This way all the kelp that's broken will float to the surface. I then jump in my boat to pick up all the items. If you do this a couple of times, you'll soon have an inventory full of the stuff. Just be careful when you're diving, as if you stay down there too long, you'll start to drown. Enchantments like Depth Strider and Respiration can be a big advantage when doing this. You should also watch out for Drowned with Tridents, as these guys hit hard. If you don't have armor, I wouldn't recommend getting kelp this way. When I had a Drowned throwing Tridents at me, I decided to stay, but you can see my health dropped pretty quickly because of that. I think if a drowned locks onto you with a trident, just leave the area, it's the best bet. <laughs> with kelp, like I said, it's a bit more work, you'll need to cook it first. I start by using two pieces of coal to cook up 16 dried kelp. You can then place this in a 3x3 crafting grid to give you a dried kelp block. This can be used as fuel and will let you cook up 20 items. So each dried kelp block can be used to cook 20 kelp, which will then give you two more dried kelp blocks. So basically you have a self-sustaining fuel source, although you'll need to do a bit of crafting in between. If you cook items other than kelp, make sure that you're cooking one piece of kelp for one of every other item, and that way you'll never run out of fuel. The reason I like kelp early game is because it's so easy to gather, and I use my furnaces mainly to get XP which I'll talk about later. You'll only get about 0.1 XP per piece of kelp, which isn't that great, but at the same time because kelp is so easy to gather and is both a fuel and an item you cook, it pretty much lets me keep the furnaces cooking permanently without much of a challenge. Next I'm going to talk about logs which can be turned into charcoal. It's good to know that this is an option, but not something that I really use that often. It's a bit of an effort to chop down the trees, and also you'll find yourself wearing down your axe pretty quickly. Basically, once you cook up logs in the furnace, you'll get charcoal. To cook up logs in the first place, I use the sticks and the saplings that drop to the ground from cutting the tree down. It will then take two of either of these per log. If you don't get any saplings or sticks though, you can always just use one of the logs you chop down as your fuel initially. Once you have one piece of charcoal, this can then be used to convert more logs into charcoal, and you'll be able to cook 8 items with each piece of charcoal you get, which is the same as regular coal. 
Next, I just want to show you that pretty much anything wooden in the game can be used in the furnace, including the bows and rods that I got from the AFK fish farm. A lot of the wooden items you can smell, you probably won't bother with, so I won't chat through them all, but it's good to know if you have any old bits of junk wood, stick them in the furnace and at least it's better than throwing them out completely. One thing I just want to call out is I thought wool could be used as a fuel too, but I looked it up and it turns out it's only the Java version of the game. So just to be clear, don't use wool as a fuel source as it won't work. <laughs> Bamboo can also be used. It grows pretty quickly, but it isn't the most efficient fuel source in the game, as it takes four pieces of bamboo to cook up any item. Later on in the game, we can obviously automate harvesting this, which makes it a bit more useful. But early on in the game, I just wouldn't bother because it's too much effort. Bamboo can be crafted into something really useful though, and that's scaffolding. Whilst it takes four bamboo to cook up one item, you can use six bamboo and a piece of string to craft six scaffolding, and then each of those can then cook six items. So increasing the potential from six pieces of bamboo resulting in one and a half items cut to the scaffolding, which will result in 36 items cooking. And all you need to do is add a piece of string to get that result. As you can imagine, a lot of people on Bedrock use scaffolding as their main fuel source. <laughs> One thing to note though, is on Java you can only smelt two items per scaffolding, so that's three times less than what we get on Bedrock. There'll likely be a parity update in the future, and I would guess that the Bedrock version of the game will be changed to match Java. Even so, you could still smelt 12 items for the scaffolding that you get from the six bamboo and one piece of string, so still a big increase on 1.5 you'd get from just the bamboo alone. As you can imagine, lava is pretty hot, <laughs> so it's actually one of the best fuels in the game. Previously, it could be a bit of a hassle to harvest, as you'd have to take loads of buckets and go on an adventure into the nether or the bottom of your world to find lava patches and harvest the lava. Now, it's actually renewable though. You can create a simple farm by placing a lava source block on top of another block with a piece of dripstone underneath that drips into a cauldron. In my experience, it then takes about 10 to 20 minutes to fill up the cauldron. Once the cauldron is full, you can then scoop up the lava in a bucket and the cauldron will start refilling again. And then you have the lava bucket which you can pop in your furnace. And don't worry, you'll also get the bucket back too. <laughs> when you use the lava in your furnace, it can cook up a massive 100 items, so over a stack and a half of items. You can see I cooked up 12 ingots and there's still loads of capacity left. The last fuel source I just want to mention is blaze rods. As I haven't been into the nether, I can't show you them working, but basically if you get blaze rods, you can then cook up 12 items with each of these. Next, we're going to talk through some of the items you can smelt up in the furnace. So I've been around and gathered some items. There are so many recipes that I'm not going to talk through them all, but I'll give you a bit of an idea of some of the main things that you can cook up in your furnace. So to start with, we'll talk about cobblestone. This can be cooked into regular stone. The same goes with cobbled deep slate into deep slate. Once you have stone, you can then cook this into smooth stone. Quartz, sandstone and basalt can all be cooked into their smooth variants too. Sand can be cooked into glass. In my texture pack, it's a bit difficult to see the glass, but I promise you it's there. <laughs> Clay balls can be cooked into bricks. These can then be crafted into brick blocks or flower pots. Netherrack can also be cooked into nether bricks. If you combine four clay balls, you'll get a clay block. This can then be cooked into terracotta, which can then be dyed. The dyed terracotta can then be cooked again into glazed terracotta. Gold, iron and chainmail armour, tools and weapons can be cooked and you'll get nuggets in return. Meats, fish, potatoes and kelp can also be cooked into better food sources. Ore blocks can be cooked into ingots, but you're better off using fortune and then cooking the ores you get in return. The same goes for blocks of coal, lapis and diamonds and the other ores you'll find, as although you'll get XP, you'll only get one item back. Sea pickles can be cooked into lime dye. Cactus can also be cooked into green dye. The various brick blocks that you find in the game can also be cooked into their cracked variants as well. 
And there's a couple of other items that I don't have yet, like chorus fruit that can be cooked into pop chorus fruit, and wet sponges which can be dried into sponges. So far we've been using a pretty basic furnace setup. I want to talk through now the mechanics of a furnace so you can better understand how to automate this. By placing a hopper on the bottom of the furnace it can extract items. Hoppers pointing into the top of the furnace will be used as an item input for the items you want to cook. And then hoppers pointing into the sides will input your fuel sources. Fuel sources won't be pulled out of the bottom of the hopper even if they aren't eligible so make sure not to put the wrong items in here as it can clog up your furnaces and make it so they stop cooking. In terms of how we're going to automate this, it's super simple. We just need to get 6 chests, 6 hoppers and 2 furnaces. We'll also place them upside down stairs on the ceiling so that we can open the chests that are going to be underneath here. We'll start by placing two chests down, with two hoppers pointing into these and furnaces on top. The chests we've just placed down will be for the output. I need a little bit more room around the back so we'll clear out a little bit of space. We can then place two hoppers pointing into the back of the furnace, with a double chest on top for the fuel. Lastly, we'll place two hoppers pointing to the top of the furnaces. This will have a double chest on top for the input items to be smelted. You can see that we can reach the chest at the back by aiming between the lower part of the hopper. This will allow us to add fuel and get the output items. And that's it done. Easy. You can then see, as we add items to the top chest, they will be divided equally between the furnaces which will speed up the cooking. The same goes for the fuel when you add that. Because of the input and output chests, we can also load up to a double chest worth of items to smell and also a double chest worth of fuel. One other advantage to this setup is that it can be used to store XP. As the items cook, the XP will keep accumulating until you manually remove an item from the furnace. You can place levers on the front of the furnace to disable the hoppers. When you flick these, you'll then be able to pull out an item and gain all the XP. Just make sure to turn the levers off again afterwards to enable your hoppers again. There's actually a bug on Bedrock at the moment too which can be exploited. When you remove items from the hopper, it's meant to set the XP back to zero again. But that doesn't actually happen, so you can actually keep building up XP in your hoppers while taking out the items to give you levels. So this can be a really good way to get your XP early on in the game. Because of this, my main furnace system will actually be placed next to my enchanting setup once I have it, so I can easily get XP out at the same time as enchanting. Because of this, I decided to remove my temporary lava farm and place in a mini 3x3 lava dripstone farm, which will give me all the fuel I need for smelting, as well as any lava that I might need to. To place the lava above the dripstone block, I just left a space in the middle of the 3x3 grid and then placed a button here to stop the lava leaking. I can then keep placing lava buckets in each spot until the 3x3 area is filled. I can then destroy the button, placing in the last dripstone block and adding the dripstone to the bottom with the cauldrons underneath. We can see drops of lava which is a good sign. I love the sound that this makes too. <laughs> As we've been smelting up plenty of iron, the last thing I want to do in this episode is get some new iron armour, as my current stuff is getting a little bit janky. I'm then going to pop my first diamond pickaxe along with my first set of armour into my souvenir box. That's it for today, hopefully you picked up some useful tips for smelting up items. I'd love to hear any comments below, don't forget to subscribe and like, and looking forward to seeing you again next time. Bye!